a center line for an axis. And then what do we need to draw? How about a polyline that looks like this? And again, don't be too fussy about uh, how perfect it is. Now, be careful. You don't want to draw this shape and revolve it. Uh, because if you do, you're going to have the world's worst piston because it's not hollow. Okay? So, think about what we were uh, mentioning a little bit earlier about hollow, right? Hollow. We need to have a hollow inside there. And I'm going to actually go in there and trim away some of the stuff I don't want. See, this is the shape that we're going to be looking for. That is the shape we're looking for. And the axis, we don't want a hole in the piston. It needs to be lined up exactly with that edge right there. All right, so get a good gander at that. I'm going to go back to mine. Here's my axis. Make sure you have polylines because if you have lines, your revolve will not be a solid, it will be surfaces. So you might have to go in and join some line work together so that when you're done, you've got a polyline. And of course, if you want to change it up or adjust, you can do that too. All right, so how about now? Let's take a look. 3D tools, revolve, revolve that polyline around that axis. And that's looking pretty good. And you see how it's hollow on the inside there? So 360 degrees, please. There's our hollow piston looking shape. Life is good. All right. Why don't you do this? Why don't you pick a shape? Pick your favorite adult beverage glass shape. And uh, why don't you try to create a stem and a base and the bowl part of the glass with a revolution. Okay, because we can use this for doing glassware also. So, top view. Set yourself up with an axis, and then think about what shape you want to draw. You can draw it with lines as long as you go back later on and join them together into a polyline. Okay, and this assignment here, make some glassware, is actually pretty challenging. I'll tell you why. It's actually pretty challenging because if we don't model accurately, we're going to have problems. Revolve and extrude are a couple of picky commands. They're very picky. And if conditions aren't perfect, they don't cooperate with you. You can't have lines on top of lines. You can't draw sloppily. Uh, but more so than that, some things Revolve just doesn't like very much. For example, did you see I made the bowl of the glass here? I made it with a three-point arc. Um, you can use a spline if you want to draw a crazy curve. But last time I checked, AutoCAD was not creating solids out of splines. So while the spline is a cool shape, there are no guarantees that you're going to get a solid model if you decide to go with the spline. Okay, but we'll try it out just for kicks. Okay. 
the uh, other thing that Revolve doesn't like very much is infinity. And here's what I mean. I mean, look at how sharp this little point's going to be out here. How thick is it right there? Well, you know, however thick it is, guess what? It gets even thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner until we get to this point where it's almost infinitely thin, right? And Revolve gets kind of bitchy when we do something like that. So what you might want to do is you might not want to have acute angles that come to this infinitely thin point. You might actually want to throw on a little tiny fillet with a radius of something like, oh, I don't know, 0.01, one hundredth of an inch, just so it's got something to work with that's not like the razor edge of the sharpest knife in the world, right? And it still looks like it comes to a point, but, you know, it'll be much better in the end for revolving purposes if it's not. The other thing you need to be careful about with a revolve Sometimes uh, people want to use arcs, and there's nothing wrong with arcs as long as those arcs don't self-intersect. So, what am I talking about? Oh, I'm talking about something like this. Uh, I want to do an arc from here to here. I want to make a little shallow, graceful arc. Well, just be careful that your arc doesn't dip below and cross over one of the other lines of your revolve. Because if it does, it's going to tell you, I can't, I can't revolve this. You've created some impossible geometry here. So when a revolve fails, generally it's because something's wrong with arcs where they're crossing each other, where you have lines on top of lines, or you have some infinitely thin little point out in space there, and it's just not happy with it. Okay, so I'm gonna make a wine glass here and maybe a margarita glass here. What do you think? Do you like like the design so far? I'm going to join them together, and I'm gonna revolve, revolve that along this axis, and you know. That looks nice, but be careful, because if you're not careful, you're going to get a glass that has no bowl. <laughs> did you see that kind of coming? If you did, good. Yeah, you see, I need to create the hollow space inside. So I'm going to have to explode my polyline, and I'm going to have to go in there and fix this up. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. You could do another arc. You could do an offset, but you got to do something. To set this up so that when it revolves, the revolve is the revolve is going to work. Okay, I'll get rid of that line, or at least trim it back to where it needs to be. Alright, see how I have a empty space now? And now we'll join it together, and then we'll revolve. What happens when we do that? Hey. Now we have a cup that actually holds some liquid, right? Nice. Okay. You probably don't want to do this, though. You probably don't want to move the axis away from the cup. Because if you do, and you go to Revolve, uh, J for Join, join your geometry together first. And then revolve, revolve the polyline around the axis. Uh, that looks like a nice cup until you start pouring wine into it, and then it comes all out the bottom of the stem, right? So make sure that's not there. And then for our last trick, I'd like to see if I can use a spline 
for my revolve. What happens when I use a spline? Let's see, let's join these things together. Okay, and then revolve. Revolve that cool spline shape along this axis here. It's saying it doesn't like it. Unable to revolve the selected object. It says the object should be to the side of the axis. So what that means is I have royally pissed off AutoCAD. It's not very happy with me. Uh, that could be for a lot of reasons. Yeah, so it turns out my uh, spline here is sticking out a little bit. So I just need to break that. I need to do a little chamfer, a little fillet, or something. But my spline was going past the axis. Okay, I think we've got this all set now. Um, all union together, all join together, and REV revolve. There's our polyline, here's our axis. Yeah, we got satisfaction, right? <clears throat> so, what does it give me? Hey, look at that. So last year, AutoCAD uh, 2019, did not give you a solid when you revolved a spline, but now it does. Look at that. That was worth the $4,000 for the upgrade, wasn't it? Okay, so splines will successfully revolve into solids now, which is exciting stuff. All right, so we've made a bunch of revolve parts, and I think what we want to do is we want to think about how you're going to apply this and uh, what are you going to be able to make. So at this point, your instructor might give you some uh, direction on some simple parts to make. Uh, sure, you can look around the house and see all kinds of things that have a revolve profile, like these chair legs here. And uh, it's actually quite therapeutic. If you ever have a chance to get a lathe, it's a lot of fun to be able to turn pieces of wood, even if it's just uh, as a hobby. But what we want to do is we want to be able to make some objects in AutoCAD. So our assignment for making some stuff in AutoCAD, if we take a look at 189 in our course pack, it talks about that revolve command and why it's going to give us some functions that we can't get out of the extrude command. Uh, here's a wood lathe, like the one we just saw. We see how half of a profile revolved around an axis will give us a solid, and how by changing the axis, with the same profile, we get a different kind of solid. And then here's our assignment. The assignment is called tapered bushing. So this is a revolved part. Uh, it's I'm not going to lie to you. It's not pretty. <laughs> uh, it involves you using your template. It involves you setting up a uh, custom scale using the scale list edit tool to make a two to three scale for when we use the view base command. You're going to make a couple of drawing views, a section view, and you're going to make something called a detail view. We're going to talk about that in a little bit too. Then you'll add dimensions and calculate the volume just like we've been doing. Okay, so what is this thing? What does it look like? Well, maybe the best thing to do is open it up. All right, here it is. Behold the tapered bushing. <laughs> 